but you've seen all these other musicians live looping and it's piqued your curiosity. Maybe you're thinking about getting started with live looping, but where do you start? There's so many different options. So I'm gonna take you through live looping at four different levels. Level one, basic live looping where you have something like a one channel looper, something like this, which is a, uh, a one track live looper stomp pedal. Generally you have this on the floor and you hit it with your foot to activate it. By hitting it once, twice, there's different functions you can set on it where you can start recording a loop. You would loop it and then you might want to add layers on top of it. You might want to add a bass line or you might want to add a... So it's very simple. What happens is a signal goes into it, which might be your piano or other instrument, or it might be your voice. Or you might want to send both your microphone and your instrument into there together. Um, if that was the case, probably get yourself a little mixer, something similar to this, and you run your piano and your voice into here, and then you run a line out so that it goes into the looper. Then from there, that will go out to your speakers or to another mixer. That's a real basic unit and I started out with something like this. I wasn't using this one, but I actually got myself the TC Helicon, the TC Helicon Voice Live 3 Extreme, which was a large foot pedal that had some uh, voice effects on there as well. That'd be your level one, basic, in and out, stop, start, record extra layers on top. Great for starting out, but you will soon find that you want to do a lot more than just one track. Level two, looping, if you can afford it, I would highly recommend five track looper or something similar like this. This is the Bose RC505. It's got five channels on it and each channel is a looper. So when you get something like a five channel, you really have a lot more versatility to stop and start different sections of your record. So you might want to start by laying a rhythm track, which you can do with uh, get that rhythm instrument. Down. Get the beat. Uh, this piano has drum kits on it. Or you can also try some basic beatboxing. I'm a rubbish beatboxer, but I sometimes do it anyway, it adds, it's better than nothing and it adds an interesting texture. Something very simple there. You want to get more fancy then uh, this piano has a whole bunch of instruments that I can use. So I can add complex layers with bass guitars, guitars, uh, synths and more vocals uh, and really create some interesting arrangements. to loop it fairly quickly together by using four or five tracks. Level three looping. So you're going guns blazing on your five track unit, adding some really interesting stuff, but you really want to add some more drums to it and you want a bit more flexibility. What you can do then is add a drum machine, which you can link via MIDI. In this case, uh, I use the machine MK3, which is a sampler slash drum machine slash production unit. I run it in conjunction with the jam, which gives me a bit more versatility there. So I connect these two units together so that when I press play on my looper, my machine will start playing in time with it. How do they communicate? Both of these units have something called MIDI clock. And I connect uh, this to this via a MIDI cable. This unit sends out a MIDI clock signal. Essentially think of it as a timer or a metronome. So this unit stays in time with whatever this is doing. This is a master and this is a slave. This follows it. So whenever I press play on here, this press play. Whenever I press stop on here, it stops. So essentially what it gives me is at the very least one more channel. So I've got five channels, plus I have drums on here. And I record that uh, and it just keeps looping, whether it's one bar, two bar. And then I have the option on this particular unit of machine where I can also load a bunch of samples. So it's not just uh, drum sounds, it's anything I can think of or anything I want to record. If you're horny, let's do it. <laughs> Thank you.
Little for looping, here's where we get a little bit crazy. So I've got all my fire tracks going, I've got my drum machine going. I want to start experimenting more and layering tracks a lot quicker. And uh, generally with loopers, what they'll do is when they want to create some harmonies, they'll record one line. Something like that, where I'll record the four tracks. Now if it's a long chorus line where there's two or four bars or eight bars, it can take a long time to build up all those harmonies. I've created a pedal board for myself where I have two effects unit. So the first little unit I've added to my vocal effects chain is the TC Helicon Harmony Singer 2. This little blue uh, stomp pedal and it instantly creates harmonies according to what I'm playing. So I send a signal out from my piano into the harmonizer and that interprets whether I'm playing a major or minor, what chord I'm playing, and then we'll duplicate my voice in the according harmonies. So that's a really quick way to add on harmonies fast. So rather than having to create all three parts of the harmony, I just record three harmonies in one go. And then next in my vocal chain, I have the TC Helicon Perform VE. This is a powerful little unit and what I mainly use this for is for effects, for delays and reverbs. Uh, I've got three different settings on there that I can quickly access. And I also use the eight part vocal harmonizer function. So anything I play on the piano, up to eight notes, it will duplicate. One run of a chorus, I've recorded a complex chorus line. Also on this foot pedal board, I've got a foot pedal for this unit to turn it on and off. I like to have my looper up here so I can see what's going on. I can see what I'm turning off and on, but the foot pedal is sometimes handy. If my hands are really busy, I can stop and then I can start it. Uh, the only caveat with that is when you start, it's going to start everything you've got recorded. So if you've got five channels, start all five channels. You need to be a bit weary sometimes of that. If you've got different sections recorded, you don't want them all starting at the same time because it's going to sound messy. And that basically is the four different stages of live looping. And just in case you're curious about this t-shirt, I designed it myself along with over 170 others. There is a Piano Girl version available and it comes in a range of colors too. They are available at my store, musicmatterstore.com and the link is down below. It's another great way you can support my channel some really cool uh, musician t-shirts uh, for yourself. I hope that's been helpful. If you have any questions, uh, make sure to let me know in the comments down below. If you think I've earned it, make sure to give this a like. And if you want to see more looping tutorials or looping performances as well, make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.